Hi, this is Gabi and this is Gabi versus Swiss Char. <laughs> Take one. So today I'm going to show you what to do with this Swiss Char you got so excited and got at the market. I'm gonna show you how to get it from here to here. I'm gonna show you how to wash, prep the Swiss Char and cook it steam it basically on a pot um, so it requires a little bit of a space and that's the problem most people think they're gonna get a humongous bunch of swiss char and then they get home and they don't know what to do with it so the way i do it that is exactly the same way my grandmother did it is i remove it from the stem and then i wash it i usually do like three washes this part will get steam but this part won't so basically what you want to do is either cut it and save this for another purpose. And if you're not gonna use it, make sure to compost. If it's a bigger stem, you can go like this. It's kind of fun, it's very therapeutic. I love doing it. And then you pull, right? So I suggest that as soon as you get from the market, prep this and get it out of the way because then you'll have it in the fridge for three days, it starts dying, you throw it out, you wasted your money, you wasted your time. This is how we clean the Swiss char. So if you do not have a bucket, please, 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 please have a very clean sink. I done it in the sink because what we're going to do is the same way you wash any greens, any fruits. We're going to fill this up with water, let it sit there for a little bit and let that soil sunk to the bottom. Let's do it. Cold water, obviously. You can like shake it a little. So we're gonna do the water, let the water do its magic. Now it's all covered with water. I'm gonna press it gently. You don't wanna squeeze it too much. And let it sit there for a few minutes. This is the first wash. Recommend to do it two or three times. You'll be the judge. So what are you gonna do? Instead of dumping the water, because that will get all the soil back into your Swiss char, you basically are going to lift. And I have the luxury of having another one of these containers. You guys know I love these containers. They're cheap. I got them at the 99 cent store. I use them for many, many things. It's not that bad plastic. You guys know how much I hate plastic. So you lift. Water is turning a little green. Don't recommend drinking it. All right, so in your last wash, when your water is already clean, basically what you're going to do, you don't even need to drain um, the excess water. You want that excess water on the leaves because that's what's going to help with the steaming. So basically you're gonna lift it up, put it on your pot without making a mess. I know it's gonna look like a lot, but you'll see. I'm gonna push it down. No salt, nothing, because the salt is kind of like, not going to distribute evenly. You better salt it when you cook. They already, um, when you use, when you utilize, they already cook Swiss char. So now that is in here, all nice and wet, you're just gonna cover your pot, turn it on medium, medium high, don't go anywhere, and let the heat do its magic. All right, so this steam a lot. Let's just turn it off. So how beautiful. This is the miracle of steaming. There you go. So I'm gonna pull it out, put it in a colander. Just careful so nobody gets hurt. Here you go. And we're gonna squeeze it gentle to remove the excess water. So just let it be, don't rinse it, because you're gonna lose all the good nutrients. Just wait, check your phone, I don't know, something. <laughs> so your greens are cooling off, or they're cooled off and off. So you're gonna basically squeeze the excess water, they're still a little hot, don't burn yourself, and then transfer them to a container, and you have them ready to make a bunch of different recipes. So now I'm gonna show you what I'm going to be making with that Swiss char I just cook. I'm going to be making something that I grew up eating, that I love. It's called buñuelos de acelga. I know, buñuelos, everybody thinks of something sweet. In Argentina, 
fritters, that this is basically what it is, are called buñuelos. And we make them with many things. We make them with onions, with carrots, with potatoes, with Swiss chard. This is my grandma's recipe that I tweak a little over the years. And it's a basic, basic uh, butter, um, the typical egg, flour, and milk. But I don't use milk anymore. I use seltzer. So I got about 10 ounces of the Swiss chard already cooked, two eggs, two tablespoons of flour, salt, pepper, nutmeg, and about two tablespoons of salsa. I might need some more. And then we're gonna fry them and eat them. Are you ready? And so you wanna get the excess of the liquid out of the Swiss chard, because remember we're gonna be frying these and you want them to hold together. So after you get the excess, we're gonna chop it so it's easier to handle. So I'm gonna Roughly chop it. Remember with um, the two bunches of uh, Swiss char, I probably get like two, three meals. I mean, I just cook for one, sometimes two, uh, but like you can make the whole Swiss char, so you will have to double this. And don't worry, this recipe is gonna be written somewhere. It will live somewhere and you'll be able to um, replicate it. I put it in a bowl. This is super easy. It's something that you can do ahead and have it prepared and then just fry them when you're ready to go. So first I'm going to put some salt, good salt, some pepper. Nutmeg is the secret powerful ingredient. I can't have this without nutmeg. How much? I don't know. A lot. You can always adjust it, you know, like after you when you start, when you ready mix the butter, you can always fry a little bit so you can taste the flavor if you think that it's missing something. Now I'm gonna put all the flour. This is a straightforward. The eggs, two eggs, two pretty eggs. I'm gonna start mixing. You don't need to beat them, just mix them. There are many ways to make fritters. There are recipes, there's so many recipes under the sun as like people frying fritters. Uh, some of them have more flour, some, like I mentioned before, call for milk. I try to avoid milk, we're not good friends anymore. So I use seltzer and that's the next ingredient. And now, last but not least, I'm gonna put the mashic ingredient, which I use a lot in many other recipes. All right, we're ready to cook. Yay! I got like a cup of oil. I'm using um, canola oil. You can't really do this with olive oil. You need an oil that is going to be able to stand the heat because we are frying. No super deep fry, but we're frying. So you get a spoonful when your oil is really hot and gentle and away. And they're free form. They're not gonna have, they're not gonna be all equal. And that's what I like about this recipe. Don't overcrowd your pan so they can all cook evenly. And you're gonna flip them around when you see the edges turning brown. One of my secrets is that I learned from my abuela to eat this, we, you can eat them cold. And she and I will sit down and eat them cold with a dollop of dulce de leche on it. So, but shh, don't tell anyone. So you can like, shred some carrots or um, slice very thin some onions and you can mix them and you can play them around with the flavors. I like with the salt, pepper and, and nutmeg, that's the very classic, but you can play around with the flavors and let me know in the comments. Make them your own, you know, that's what I like. I like people to make my recipes their own. So here are my fritters. Can, my grandma used to sprinkle them with sugar sometime. I love her. And yes, you can make them as little or small as you want, so you can have them as an appetizer. Uh, I will eat this with a salad. The sky's the limit. Let me know in the comments. How do you like them? How do you eat them? All right, so I'm gonna do the testy test. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, listen to this. Ooh, yummy. You make sure you're eating your greens. Mmm. Mmm, delicioso. Mm -hmm. So good. Now my teeth are gonna be all green. I can eat the whole tray. Buen provecho. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi 
guys, so you just finished watching a video, so I want to thank you for that. And I want to ask you if you want to support me. The best thing you can do right now, if you haven't yet, is subscribe to this channel in the red button right there. You can also turn on the bell, so the next time I have a video out, you'll be the first ones to know. You can subscribe to my newsletter, like me on Instagram, make sure to send me messages, share this with your friends and family. Let me know in the comments if you want to see other things or if you have questions, you can always hashtag me, ask Gabby. Uh, if you want to know more about Pucho or about my kitchen, let me know. I'm here for you and I'm thanking you again for all your support. See you soon.